So I just got back from the dentist and I just feel like I've gone to a Korean massage parlor and didn't get my happy ending. I mean, uh, I want them to do something, you know, and I, have, I don't remember when the last time I was at the dentist before, but they didn't take x-rays. They didn't listen to what I said about, you know, having a hole in the back of this tooth. And, um... They just seemed obsessed with me getting my partials done finally. And it's like, man, take some x-rays. I haven't been in here for a long time. You know, and uh, I didn't push because she said, well, the doctor will be in here and she will decide if you need x-rays or not. And it's like, that place is like, bang, bang, bang. It's cheap dentistry. Um, so I'm like pissed off because I took... A milligram of Xanax, 10 milligrams of volume, man. This is like the first time I've been out. Uh, God, I don't know how long. Uh, at least January. At least January. So, you know, that's some serious cabin fever going on there. So, uh, I go in there and they usually have like 30 chairs. There's six chairs. There's little teeth on the floor stickers that say six feet and then you're supposed to stand on the little teeth stickers they're not that little they were pretty big actually and um everybody was wearing masks i had to wear a mask and i they don't have hazmat suits on i don't know why i got that impression they just have masks on too you know and uh the mask is, is uh supposed to protect me they don't got to worry about me but it's just like i feel like i just you know, my, I had, a, I knew this guy named Jim Groves. He made, I've never seen anybody make this expression before him. But I asked him how his fishing trip was, and he said, that's what that felt like. It's, it felt, it felt like a jerk off, man. It felt like, uh, I, I, I used to, I, maybe I'm mixing my metaphors or whatever, but it felt, it just felt like, you know, I was just jerking myself off going in there. It's like, I got nothing done. They're going to make some partials for me. And I feel like, you know, I come home and after that, I was like biting down on the impression plates and shit. This tooth start hurting like a bitch. You know, I don't mind coming out of the dentist with your teeth hurting. But they're supposed to be from something they done involving a drill or pliers or some damn shit. And, uh, yeah, so, man, I'm not happy. And it's like, uh. I don't know what dental options I got as far as going to anybody else. I mean, I went to this place named Immediate Dent. And, you know, I would like to take, I told the driver that, you know, everybody takes things too seriously. But I did kind of want to take a Molotov cocktail and throw it through their window after hours. They were the people that left the necrotic tooth. And they, they kept telling me the necrotic tooth in my head was fine. And then I went to this dentist and they said, you got a necrotic tooth in your head. And they took the x-rays and they said, you see this thing right here? This tooth is dead. That's why when you press right here, it hurts. So I'm walking around with a dead tooth in my head. And I have to go through all this hell trying to find uh, um, an oral surgeon with, that, will, that will take my insurance. I can only find one that's up toward Cleveland, like uh, 60 miles away. And then... Um, it takes me two months to get in there. I'm just dragging around this dead tooth. It, it actually was on this side of my head. And, um... Yeah. And it's like... I feel a, a little bit of sense of deja vu. Because I'm telling them there's something wrong with that dead tooth five years ago. Or however long ago that was. And they're like, no, no, no. You know. This tooth's fine. I'm like... The bad part is, is like, when you go in there all doped up, maybe I'm not forceful enough, you know, and I don't want to make, like, raise a fuss. I don't be like, listen, god damn it. Take some x-rays, man. Take this shit seriously. They just get, get, like, tunnel vision, like, you need to get your partial plates done. You were supposed to get them done last time. And then, you know, she, uh, they had the good professional dental floss, so it didn't get hung up in whatever cavity or whatever thing that is there and then she took the scraper tool and she said well I'm not getting anything it's just like a black spot you know and it's like um, I said yeah it's kind of sensitive when I draw in air and she's like oh you'll get that because you're not wearing a partial plate and uh, that's why you got that thing going on on the side of your teeth and I'm like eh, I don't know about all this shit she asked me right away if there was something wrong with number two is what she called this tooth over here 
and uh, I was, she looked at it immediately, and uh, I have a feeling that thing needs yanked out of my head. So I'm real pissed off because, man, my stomach was cramp cramped up. I told them, like, the first day of school. They said, how are you feeling? I said, I'm feeling like it's the first day of school because, uh, yeah, I was, I was a mess, man. I broke out the Xanax, which I of, of which I have very few left because I know somebody that uh, mm, got a heroin problem and lost their subutex um, script. So I hooked them up with that shit. And, uh, uh, you know, I was just not a lot of them, but you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, so I was like, I don't know how many of those things I have left, but I don't have a lot of them left, but I took a milligrams worth of, uh, Xanax and then 10 milligrams of Valium when I was in there, you know, all for nothing, it's like, you're fortifying yourself because you think they're going to be shaving down your tooth and putting down a cap or breaking down the drill or doing a root canal or something like that, so you're all doped up for absolutely no fucking reason, and, uh, yeah, I, I think I, I I don't have a lot of dental options because you're you know I got poor people's insurance so I got poor people's teeth, like they say in the uh, Tony Hillerman uh, Navajo mysteries, the uh, Navajo Indians in there or Native Americans if you prefer, uh, would say oh. All I, they asked for a description on a sus suspect, and they said they have poor person's teeth like this. This is poor, piece, poor person's teeth. So, yeah, I'm like, just pissed off about the whole thing. I woke up at like 11.30, and, uh, you know, my, my appointment was for uh, um, 9.30 in the morning. So I tried to go back to sleep, but I couldn't go back to sleep. And I woke up with a sense of dread and nervousness, and then I finally felt a little better. And, uh, you know, but I, it still was like, uh, like I said, it was like the first day of school. It was like, I don't know what kind of even world I'm going out into. You know, I haven't been anywhere. And they were like, who does your grocery shop? And I was like, I get them delivered. And I said, I haven't been anywhere in three months. I lied. It's more like five months. But she just came up with that number three months because I said, I said, uh, I haven't been anywhere for in like forever. So, you know, the uh, quarantine around here was from like uh, March 23rd until May 1st. And then a limited quarantine, you know, a, a stay at home suggestion from May 1st. Um, through till the end of May. So that's probably where she came up with three months. But yeah, I just have a bad feeling that this tooth is going to cause me a lot of grief. And I don't know what's going on with this tooth. You know, and it's like, it's, it's my own damn fault. I should have insisted upon x rays, you know. I don't like to be scary. I don't like to scare women. I tend to be scary, but I should have said, I need some x-rays. I want them now, you know, because I had an instance where I was in a, in a dental place and they were like, I got a little bit red in the face, you know. I got a little angry. That was at a media event. And they were like, you need to sit down there and listen to it. And I said, I, I don't need to sit down and do nothing. What I need to do is walk the hell out of here. And then that was, a la that was it for that place. But I just like, I didn't push her out of the way. She got the fuck out of the way. I should have been like that today. Like, like take some x-rays. But it's only three weeks down the road. And I can insist upon x-rays. And um, I'll just tell them I got a whole bunch of pain and I need x-rays. It's what I should have fucking did today. I'll probably have a goddamn toothache in three weeks though. Or something bad going on here. And plus I used up all my antibiotics. You know, maybe for nothing. I only got like... I got three left in there. So they're useless. Three antibiotics ain't worth nothing. Uh, yeah, so that's how my appointment went. Just generally pissed me off. There's no... I don't even get to have like a sense of relief. 
coming home just angry and anticipating doom you know like like uh, this isn't good this shit here is not good you know they, they I just jammed this full of uh, uh what is it or Joe and I'll probably jam some more in there and uh motherfucker Anyways, that's how my dental appointment went. Anybody who's interested. I'm glad, um, Cindy, I'm glad you got to take your granddaughter down to the creek. And uh, that's how we say it in Ohio, the creek. And, um, yeah, I would be fishing in that creek if I had my druthers. But it is a beautiful day here today, but it's not a beautiful day for me. It is, uh, it was 54 degrees when I woke up, nice and cool. It's still, like... It's like 71 degrees out, sunny. It's beautiful out, but I'm going to be sleeping pretty soon. And I could tell, like, on the car ride home that my speech was slurred and that I, I sounded kind of dopey to myself, you know, because I'm full of benzos. Um, to try to, you know, ease up that stomach, man, to get over those nerves because I did not want to go in there. And, uh, man, I, I just, that's what I'm going to do in three weeks is just, like, take some x-rays, please. When's the last time I had x-rays? Because they just do everything boom, boom, boom. There's no time. There's no attention to the patient. There's no attention to detail. I've been to good dentists before. They take time and they talk to you. You know, it's not like, uh, yeah, I'll be back in two seconds. Are you okay here? I and mean, go run off and see somebody other, other patient. You got, like, two seconds to make your fucking point, whatever it is. And, um, you know, I went to these guys that were the, uh, the Dr. Peters father and son team. And, of course, you know, once they built up a practice, they didn't need my shitty ass insurance anymore. So I got kicked to the curb but while I was going there. Those those guys, they sat with you. They talked to you. You know, they gave you time. It wasn't like, you know, that place they're running around in there like chickens with their head heads cut off or more like chickens pecking around trying to find dollar bills here and there you, you get the uh, impression of a very desperate business you know it's like the stock market market exchange or something in the movies where, where you see everybody like running around buy sell buy sell and everybody's all frantic and stuff it's fucking crazy i didn't think it would be like that in the covid thing because they don't don't have that many patients, but it's pretty much the same. You know, you're talking to the doctor one minute, next minute she's running off and you're talking to somebody on the phone. I'll be back in a second. She comes back in, you tell her something, and uh, you know she like contradicts you and asks you if you have pain. You tell her you have pain, and she's like, uh, "I didn't. I was my fault there. It's like I didn't make a big enough imp impression about that, but I did tell the truth." I said that like you know, this this hurts sometimes with sweet stuff or when I chew gum, I get some sensitivity there. You know, but if you have an X-ray, you can see the actual root and you can tell if there is an infection or if there is a problem. So I I, I think you, sir, are not long for this world. Yeah. Um, I had a cool story I was going to tell, but uh, I'm not in the mood for it. But uh, can. Considering like um, the stuff that I've been posting and writing about, it's like uh, I got humiliated very badly by uh, a so-called black police officer, and it's a pretty good story, and uh, I just thought I would tell it at some point. It's a, it's an utterly ridiculous, pointless story, and it was one of them deals where the guy was looking for an excuse to hurt me. And, uh, you know, he, he was, uh, just a dick. I didn't think of him as racist. I didn't think like this guy hates me because I'm white. I was like, this guy's a fucking dick. You know, and I think that's a lot of people. It's like, um, a lot of people are thinking that these white cops, now I'm not talking about the ones that are beating up and killing people, but I'm talking about the ones that are so-called uh, rude, shall we say, or racist, if, if you want to put it that way, uh, toward black suspects. The guys are just dicks, you know. 
It's like even in this uh, George Floyd case, you cannot prove that that was a racially motivated killing because you can't read the guy's mind. The guy has no history of, uh, uh, you know, what, whatever would indicate racial uh, bias or, or bigotry. or There's nothing like that. But the only thing they have to go on is it's a black guy and a white guy. So if you jump to that conclusion, that's a race racial incident based on the color of the principles involved in the interests, that makes you a racist. Now, I made that point, and nobody has come back at me on it. I made that point on a couple of threads, and nobody has come back on it. And uh, it's like, you can't read that guy's mind. That my guy that killed the George Floyd guy by kneeling on his neck, and he, he actually had help killing him because there was guys like laying on, one guy was laying on his back because he's a big guy and the other guy had a hold of his feet. Um, but the guy who had the knee on the neck, it's like, uh, that guy might have been an equal opportunity sadist. He might have just like wanted to kill somebody, you know, but then we got these uh, riots and shit, people burning down, uh, police stations and uh, I've seen some of the footage you know but there's protests literally in every state over this stuff literally in every state and um, it one of the funniest things that I saw and sure enough it was on Fox News you know and it's like I don't follow uh, like I say if I want news about America I don't go to American based news but they did make a good point that um, <laughs> there was white guys as part of the riot burning down black owned stores saying black lives matter in the riot. That's funny in a very sick way. It's very fucking funny. White guys burning down black guys stores screaming black lives matter. Okay. I think it's just like party time for these young people, you know, because they've been trapped in with the COVID and uh, it's like aggravating and shit. And, uh, yeah. Um, but, like like I said, I've had, I got stopped on a bicycle, which is freaking humiliating, by a black cop. Or, you know, I don't even like to use black, white, or whatever. I don't believe in that shit. But you have to use the language of the times to be understood. So we will say someone who is more comfortable in the sun than me stops me on a bicycle. And his excuse for stopping me on a bicycle and uh, getting my social security number and running it through the thing in his car was, he said, well, a lot of people that uh, are riding bicycles at this time of night are because they have DUIs. So you could have been riding drunk. And I'm thinking, there ain't nobody on the road. I, I, who the hell am I going to hit on my 12-speed Huffy? <laughs> yeah. So I could have viewed that as police harassment. I just view, viewed that as humiliating. It had never occurred to me for a second that this black cop was bothering me because I was white. You know, I've had many, I lived in a bad neighborhood. I had many run-ins with cops of all persuasions and a lot of them were not well I would say 98 percent of them were not good and not fun and uh, uh, I never it never would occur to me you know to jump to that conclusion like I can't read that guy's mind and it reminds me of like the black guy that, that lived upstairs and yes I guess I just have to start referring you use the uh, you know when you're in Rome this guy just met the guy. He's like, tells me I have a white girlfriend. And I'm like, I literally said to him, yeah, I know. I'm not blind. <laughs> I literally said that to him. I was like, I can see. <laughs> Why would I care? Why are you offering me this information? I'm just glad I don't have to deal with the bitch. I'm glad you took her off the market. You know, I don't care. 
You know, but yeah, he actually offered that information. And then when he got booted out of here, uh, he was all up in the uh, landlord's grill about uh, it. You, you're just doing this because I'm black. And it's like Maybe the fact that, I don't know, you're having fights and uh, you open the front door so hard that you dent it in the building and cracked the siding. And uh, uh, you literally, like, have... Th those were the fighting and fucking couple that I always talk about. They're always doing two, one of two things. They're either fighting or fucking. And they, it was hard to tell which one they were doing the loudest. But they were an interracial couple. She weighed about 100 pounds. He weighed about 250. So it sounded like she was getting murdered or something up there. And, uh, you know, they just like a rough sex or something like that. I don't know. But then they would fight. And I would have to listen to them fuck. And then I would have to listen to them fight. And at some point, uh, this guy actually called the police on him for fucking, which I've never heard before. And actually made my uh, uh, cop friend who 30 years on the force laugh. And he was like, yeah, we had an incident like that once, man. The guy comes to the door in a towel. He wasn't too happy. <laughs> if you want to carry on, man, get you a motel room. <laughs> you, you don't do that shit in, a, in, a, in an apartment, apartment, man. Or get you a uh, sex dungeon or some shit. Uh, man. But, uh, yeah. So there's just people that want to see race and everything. It's just, it's just so fucking annoying. And um, most people are like me. Their experiences with cops are like 98% negative. So they don't like cops because when they see a uniform, it usually means they're getting bothered. So, you know, they don't stop to think that, uh, yeah, maybe this guy is got to do that as part of his job maybe he's got the he's he has to bother you as part of his job maybe he doesn't want to bother you any more than you want bothered they don't don't ever think of it from the cops perspective now what i've been hearing and i hope to god this isn't true is that there's actually a movement uh coming where they're talking about disbanding no defunding uh police forces and we're trying to replace uh, police forces with something else. Now, I don't like guns. I don't own a gun. But if they disband the police force around here, I'm getting me a goddamn gun. Because uh, that is just crazy. I actually wrote a post. That I was like, I'm pretty sure that it was in a long thread of about 400 people. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that there's no one crazy enough here to say that we don't need police, right? You know, it never occurred to me that there are people right now as we speak, or as I speak and as you listen, uh, that are adv advocating disbanding the police in certain areas. That is some crazy, wacky shit that people are coming up with. And, and it's already been tried in uh, in the past. And what happens is it's party time for the criminals, man. You know, it's like, uh, you want, do you really want to have a Wild West, you know, like Dodge City atmosphere where it's like uh, I, you got to be packing and carrying a concealed weapon with you because the police aren't there to protect you or you can't call the police or like when I had the machete incident. It's like I couldn't have called the police. I would have actually had to use the machete. You know? Like, I don't... No, I don't want no part of that, man. <laughs> that's, uh, that's not my job. You know? That kind of talk is actually being uh, bannered around. Look it up on YouTube, man, if you haven't heard about it already, man. Uh, just search defunding the police or something like that. And there's like a... Uh, uh, I think a Congress woman that's like leading the charge for this idea and it's actually become like a serious talking point you know all over something that they cannot prove which is a supposed racially motivated uh, killing which you can't read that cop's head to know why he did that he could just be a sick fuck that likes to hurt people it could have been an Asian guy he was strangling it could have been any anybody. It could have been a Russian guy. It could have been uh, 
a white guy. It could have been anybody. Maybe he just like maybe he likes to kill small animals in his spare time. Who knows? But man, uh, yeah, the world getting crazy, folks. It getting crazy. It's like I wish I lived out in the country and could go fishing in the creek with my granddaughter, because uh, that sounds pretty good right about now. Uh, yeah. But I'll be asleep here shortly, cause I'm full of dope and uh, anger, and I got a sore tooth. I did manage to eat something, and my stomach, of course, hated it. So I'll probably have to eat something before I go to sleep. But it's gonna happen. Um, yeah, this world is just going crazy, man. Uh, I just, I just don't get it. Um, anyways, I thought I would just tell any of the, I think only 10 people watched the last video, but uh, I don't care if only one person watches the video. I just thought I'd tell you how the dentist appointment went and how I felt uh, like I didn't get my happy ending. You know, I'm expecting, I'm expecting like major things to be done to this tooth and they're like, oh, that tooth's fine. Then I come out and this tooth's hurt, and I, as soon as I come home, I just can't wait to jam more gel on it because when they uh, put the uh, dental impression plate on there, it woke up some. It woke it up like uh, Smog the Dragon, you know, inside his uh, inside uh, what what the Lonely Mountain when he was sleeping on his pile of gold and peaceful, and now now the fucker's all breathing fire in my mouth and shit, and uh, yeah. But I'll go back there in three weeks, and uh, I didn't feel like uh, especially afraid of COVID or whatever today when I was out in the world. I don't know. I'm kind of like over the COVID fear thing, I think. I wore I wore gloves on my hands. I figured, why not? And I wore a long sleeve shirt because I'm going to be sitting in chairs that other people have been sitting in, you know. So I wore a flannel shirt, and uh, I wore a mask like they said I should wear a mask. And, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty much over that, man. Uh, I've been thinking some, I should just wrap this up, of course, but, uh, I've been thinking some about my living situation here. And, uh, like one good thing that happened is I found $20, $20 in my walker that was just stashed there. So I was 20, I had 20 more dollars than I thought I had. That was like the highlight of my morning. Uh, but I've been thinking like, yeah, I really do need to get out of here. You know, I, I need to get my head situated around to where I can start making calls and uh, making inquiries. If I didn't have that cat, it'd just be so easy. And he was in this morning and I gave him some food and I chased him out and uh, shut the window. Because when I come home, I wanted to go to sleep. I just didn't want to have to deal with it. He's such a sensitive animal, too. It makes you feel bad. But I can just put a little bass in my voice. You're like, man, you got to go. Time to go. And uh, he's like, can't wait to get outside. I've never abused him, ever. Ever. The closest I came to any kind of cat abuse, because I don't do shit like that, is uh, spraying him with the... Uh, the hose for washing dishes when he would jump up on the counter next to the dish tray. Uh, that's about it. And I stopped doing that because it wasn't working. And then it would get stuck. It would be funny because the hose would get stuck in the arm position. And then I would end up spraying myself more than the cat because, you know, it. I would like spray the cat and it would get stuck in the arm position. I'd forget about it. And then like it'd be uh, cold. And, and I turn on the water and the hose just comes, you know, hit me in the chest full blast. And I'm like, shit, shit. <laughs> so, I was, so I was spraying me more than I was spraying the cat. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so we've established that I can get out in the world and not completely freak out even though it felt like it. So that's good. That's about the only good thing about today is like, okay, I said I'd go to the dentist. I went to the dentist. I didn't push out. You know, I took care of business. Nothing got done. 
Uh, they should have been taking x-rays, but they're shitty dentists. They're poor people. It's poor people dentistry. They had a sneeze guard up, by the way. That's the one thing I didn't mention, you know, and they had, it's, they had like a little slot, and they had a sneeze guard up, like, you know, the whole desk was enclosed, and then you would slide your papers, like, uh, you know, I like when they would check cashing places or some place where they work, they got bulletproof glass up. Anyway, that's about it. Um, yeah, I'll check in in a couple of days or whatever. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. But, uh, anyways, if you got nice weather where you're, where you're at, man, go out and enjoy it. If you can. Because I'm not going to be able to. And, uh, that's called Life in the City. Life in the city, you hear lawnmowers, you hear motorcycles, you hear cars, uh, you go outside, you have to see people and interact with people. Uh, yesterday when I went outside to get sun, the neighbor's dog come running up at me and I'm like, hello bear, that's the dog's name, hello bear, how you doing? How you doing there, neighbor? You know, and I just want to walk around the back and then like, um, hearing the lady walking the dog from upstairs and then I see the guy in the wheelchair who I don't talk to and I said I'd never talk to again and it's like uh, that is really the cool thing about would be the cool thing to me about living out in the country is like I go outside I don't have to see nobody I don't have to see nothing but blue jays hawks squirrels rabbits I'll pass on the mountain lions I don't want to see no mountain lions man. I don't, I don't like that idea I mean, I got intimidated by a house cat before, so I, God only knows what a mountain lion. A mountain lion might make me lose control of my bladder because I, I, I got backed off by a house cat that was pissed off. So I was like, okay, buddy. He was a good-sized male cat, but I was like, okay, buddy, man. I got it because he went into complete feral mode on me. He was like, man, just you t try and touch me. I will fuck your old shit up. Because I accidentally closed him in the screen door and he wanted to come in and it was raining outside. And I'm like, I don't want you to, you know, make arrangements. But he was already wet. And he was like, I'm coming in this house, bitch. I'm coming through you. You know, I was like, You're okay, man, you can stay. Because <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but a house cat might not be lethal. But it can make you rue being alive. I can tell you that much. If you ever been bit by a cat for real, not no love nip, but a real bite where the teeth go all the way in, or you've been attacked by a cat or clawed by a cat for real, where they're not just playing around, where they're trying to hurt you, they will ruin your day. They'll ruin your week. That should take a while to heal. So, yeah, I got back. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I got back down by my own house cat. I was like, okay, buddy. So I was going to reach down and pick him up and throw him back outside. You know, because I didn't want him in the house. And he just let me know. He was like, if you touch me, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> All right. So if I saw a mountain lion, man, yeah, it's time to change my pants. <laughs> I can't deal with that. But I would, I, I, I would like to, uh, I do like to see animals in the wild, and I do miss being in the outdoors and being an outdoors man and shit. Even if I never have figured out what poison ivy looks like, uh, just sitting outside and uh, you know, if you sit, like I said, if you sit still in the wild, animals will come up and talk to you. It's pretty damn cool. You know, like I said, I had a bat land like right here. I got a close up of how ugly a damn bat is. Turn my head, looking at a bat when I was fishing at night, and. Uh, that's not necessarily a charming story, but I thought it was cool. And then I had a fox sneak up behind me, like, and play a practical joke, and they can make sounds like a baby crying. And just all the hair on my head, like, stood up and wavered when I had hair. Because uh, it scared the shit out of me, man. And, uh, yeah, deer and uh, all kind of animals will come up. Because uh, if they don't smell you and you ain't moving, you don't exist to them. So, um, they, they can't figure out what you are just by the shape of you, you know, 
you're, you don't mean anything until you're moving or they can smell you. So, um, yeah. I'm trying to think of some other animals. But it's been too long since I don't get to do that shit anymore. I haven't gone fishing for serious in six years. And I haven't even done the outdoors thing for like 10 years. And, uh, <laughs> you take things for granted, you know, but just, uh, just, uh, carp fishing early in the morning in the parks when nobody's there and, uh, you watch, uh, like I watched a big great horned owl come swooping down. They don't make any noise at all when they fly. Just come swooping down over top of my head. I don't know what it was hunting, but it didn't stop. But I was like, that is a big damn bird. And uh, seeing um, storks and the uh, heron and stuff in the wild. I mean, we don't have like a wide selection of animals. I don't think we have any uh, mountain lions or anything around here. Uh, we have coyotes. I've never seen a coyote in a while, but I heard them. That's kind of weird. Um, but I'm prattling on like I tend to do about whatever. I'm starting to get a headache from stress and uh, anger and uh, lack of sleep and perhaps a little bit of benzo overload. So, yeah, I will see you.